Hey there, Falcon fans. This is Paul Freelds, and I'm going to show you another great effect in the UVI Falcon arsenal. I'm a huge Falcon fan. I think it is the greatest sound design tool known to man. Um, one of my favorite effects to use for different purposes is the effect rack. And a lot of people uh, are not aware of it or haven't used it very much. And I have received uh, some questions from people about this uh, over the last year. And so I'm going to show you a little bit about how to use this. Now, to start with, I've got a very simple uh, pluck patch here. No big deal. Nothing to write home about. Just a way for us to be able to hear some of the effects that we're going to use here. So this is just a... Uh, a patch with no effects at the at the moment. And of course, we would probably be inclined if we're using this in a, a piece of music or something, we'd probably do something like attach a delay. Um, we'd probably throw a, throw a reverb in here of some sort. Let's you know, do a little adjustment, maybe, you know, turn this to, uh, you know, something like an eighth or an eighth uh, dotted eighth, maybe we'll turn the feedback up, we'll um, turn the mix down to about 20%. We might modulate it just a little bit, and then we'll go to the reverb. Um, and then here again, we would turn the mix down to something more reasonable. We might turn the decay up a bit. Um, we might uh, add a little bit of size to the room and shape and put a smidge of pre-delay on it. Okay, great. That is definitely a wetter sound than we had before. Okay, nice. Um, one of the issues, though, with this kind of sound design is all of these effects are serial. And what I mean is they're running, you know, the dry signal comes in, it runs into the delay, and then it runs through the delay into the reverb and then out into your, uh, out into the program level, uh, and then, you know, out into your uh, speakers or to the listener's ears. Now, that's all well and good. But the mix that we set on the delay really is, uh, that determines everything that the, ver the reverb, the spark verb is going to process. In other words, there is a mix of both wet and dry signal that are going through to the reverb. The wet signal from the delay is automatically being processed by the reverb, just like the dry part. And maybe that's not what we want. Maybe we're doing some sound design where we want the eff one effect to come through clearly without the effects behind it, but we still want the dry signal to get those effects. And we don't want to have to, you know, maybe set up uh, duplicates of the patch or, you know, some other sort of weird convoluted CPU killing method. And the effects rack uh, in Falcon gives us a way to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually just, I'm going to remove these and I'm going to add an effect rack at the layer level. And this effect rack is just going to be blank. Um, you'll see it appear here in the tree view. Uh, I'm a big fan of the tree view because it shows you basically everything in your, in your multi, uh, the entire architecture of everything that's going on. So it's really useful. If I roll down here to the effects rack, I'll see that a chain, an effect chain has been added. And chain is exactly what it sounds like. You can put as many effects in a chain as you want and put that chain in the effect rack. And more than that, you can add as many chains as you like. Um, if I hit the chain here and then I roll up to the effects tab, you'll notice that I've already been maneuvered over to the uh, right place in my patch. In other words, I'm within the layer. I'm in the first effects insert, which is the effect rack. And then I'm in the first chain in that effect rack. Now, here's an interesting thing. The way that an effect rack works is the sound goes into the rack and then each chain receives whatever the effect rack received. Now that might be a dry signal or it might be a signal that you put some pre effects on, whichever it is, Every chain gets the exact same input and then can process it in parallel. And that is really useful. This is a lot of times what you hear being done in studio recordings. And so having Falcon be able to emulate that is just another, you know, kind of piece of its advanced wizardry that I love because it gives you maximum control over what comes out the other side. And if you're into sound design, that's really what you're looking for. Now, 
when I say that uh, the the effect rack processes all of this uh, all of this work in parallel, what that means is that you probably want not just the affected signal, but you probably want some of the dry signal to come out of the other end. That is, in fact, what we do with a lot of our effects like reverb and delay. We use that mix knob and we turn up the mix to some percent or some uh, some uh, dB level and the rest of it will be the dry signal. So it's a good habit to get into to make yourself a chain here, your very first chain. Call it dry. And the way to make sure that it stays that way and, and, uh, and passes the signal through is just to stick a dummy gain in. This gain is literally saying it's doing nothing. In other words, sound is coming into the gain. Its volume is not being affected at all, and then it's being passed out the other side. Great. That means that we've got our dry signal. Now we're going to add a couple more chains. So I'm going to go here to the effects. I'm going to add, uh, let's see, another chain. I'm going to do another chain after that. We're going to make this second chain our delay. And I'm going to make this third chain my reverb. Let me pop back up here to the delay and we'll throw in our dual delay here. We'll uh, sync it in time. We'll set this to like a dotted eighth note, turn the feedback up a little. Uh, we're going to turn the amount on the mix all the way to 100%. This is typically what you do with your effects that are in uh, a rack like this. Now, if I were adding other effects after this, I might not want 100%. I might want to set this as something different. The chain that I'm doing here is only going to have one function, which is this delay. And therefore, I'm going to mix it up to 100%. And, you know, I may, might do a couple other things here, like maybe I'm going to uh, cut the highs in this delay, give it like a little, like a kind of a vibey character, um, turn the lows up, and uh, I might uh, maybe I'll do a little bit more. There we go. Just offset those a little bit. And when I play this, you're going to hear that delay coming through. Very hot. Okay, that may be a little hotter than we want. Well, no problem. And by the way, each of these uh, chains the effect rack, uh, in the effect rack can be manipulated uh, independently. So I can turn off this chain, and you will not be hearing the delay at all. Turn it back on, and you're hearing it. And if it's too loud, I'll just take it down a bit. Let's say take it down to about maybe 5 or 6 dB down. Nice. Okay, that's what I wanted. I'm going to pop over to the reverb now and add, a, add our lovely spark verb here. Love this reverb so much. And turn the shape up a bit. I'm going to add about 20, 25 milliseconds of pre-delay. Um, again, I'm going to turn this mix up to 100. I could either roll the knob or I could double click it and type 100%. And I'm going to roll this one off too so that it's not so uh, brash. <laughs> All right, that's a nice sounding reverb, but it is, again, a lot. So I'm going to take this down to about 5 or 6 dB down. And one of the things that you'll hear if you're listening on good speakers is that the delays are dry. I'm going to turn them up so that you can hear them a little better. Notice how, again, let me turn it up a bit more. Notice how the delays are dry. Uh, in other words, they are not passing through that reverb. So this gives you a lot of control over the effects chains that you run. And of course, all of this can be controlled in various ways through macros. Now, one of the great things about the effects rack, and I'm going to go, I'm going to click on the rack here, and what you're going to see uh, up in the breadcrumbs is that I'm now back at the layer level, and I'm looking at that effect rack right now. Now I'm going to add a few uh, a few controls here. So we're going to add uh, a an effect rack macro. You'll notice that this appears for effect racks. You don't normally see this uh, for other controls, but when you're within an effect rack, you get this additional control to add a new macro. So I'm going to uh, add that macro. That is our delay on. That's the delay on off. Actually, we'll just call it delay. That's easy enough. And then we'll make it an on-off switch. Oop, make sure that that name kept. There we go. And we're going to do this. And then we're also going to add a macro for the level. We'll call it delay level. 
and that will be a continuous controller. We're going to do the same thing for the reverb. We're going to add a new macro for that. We'll call it reverb. Oops, forgot to hit enter. I do this all the time, you can tell. Turn that switch on, and then we're going to add an effect, reco, uh, effect rack macro for the reverb level as well. We'll call this reverb level. And just you can see that all these are working. If I start flicking around the delay level, you'll see that that's working over there. Reverb, similarly, uh, that's going to work as well. And one of the things that uh, I find about effect macros like this is I, I often find that the range that I'm looking for is, um, is not necessarily going to be uh, the full range, but I want to have some useful range of options. In other words, I probably don't want my, want my delays to get to the point where if I turn this all the way up, the delays are literally louder than the dry signal. I may not want that. And so one thing that I can do is I can go to the delay, uh, I can um, uh, go to the modulation itself, and I can tell it, well, I'm going to start this, let's see, I don't mind starting at zero, but I'm only going to process this up to, let's say, 75%. And now, you'll see that this tops out the delay just a little bit under the dry signal. So it's a little more usable. And if for some reason, uh, maybe I don't want this to go all the way dry. Of course, I could do, you know, what, what you would normally do and set a starting level, an offset. Uh, so I might start this offset at, say, eh, you know, 40% in or something like that. I'll turn the, um, the top down so that it uh, tops out at about 35, 40%. And now my delay starts very low and tops out at a usable level. So I could do that for all of these if I wanted. Um, I'm not going to bother right now. It's, I'll leave that as an exercise to the reader. But this shows you that uh, your effect rack can have its own macros. Now, you may be wondering, well, why put them here? Well, the reason being is that I can take this effect rack and I can save this save this as a preset and I can call this simple delay and verb and i'll save that and what that means is if i ever want to use that effect rack again so for instance if i go back to my edit screen get to the layer level here i can add an effect rack now from directly from my menu simple delay and verb and you'll notice that it put in this new effects unit with all the settings that i had already uh, that i had already configured so that's very useful let me get rid of that extra one so let me show you one other trick uh, about the effect rack that is useful. Let's say that you found your levels that you're happy with um, and you've set up a preset, um, but you may want some of these controls to appear at the uh, info level. In other words, at the program level, you might want these macros. You can take any of these uh, any of these controls, and you can still map them as regular program macros. I switched over the effects screen, but let me run back to the edit screen where you can see a little better. I could uh, set levels that I like here, and I could take this delay, assign it to a new macro, which is, again, just a regular macro at the program level. And if I run back here to the info screen, um, I probably want this, I probably want this macro, however, to be the right kind. I'm going to make that a an on-off switch. There we go. And I probably want the name for it, delay. Beautiful. I can do that with any of the macros that I like. There is a good reason for having these available at the uh, at the effect rack level, because that means that you can actually use them while you're editing the patch. So in other words, while you're doing all of this work in your editing screen, you have direct access to all of these controls rather than having to switch out to the info screen to wiggle things around. So that is really useful um, to have these saved with the effect rack preset. So hopefully this gives you an idea of what the effect rack is capable of and uh, gives you some ideas for your own sound design work. And I hope that uh, you will make something using this. And when you do, I hope that you'll share it with the world because that's how creativity flourishes, uh, by sharing what you've made. So I hope this inspires you to do that. And until then, I hope you have a lot of fun with Falcon. I'm Paul Frields, and I'll see you next time.